students at University College are immoral? Well, that depends on what you define immor immorality as. I mean, if you say that 60% of the British students living together is immoral, well, I guess they are more immoral than other students in the States, for instance. Well, what do you think is immoral? Well, I think um, man's sort of indecency to other men is immoral. Things like using napalm in Vietnam or just fighting in Vietnam at all. I think um, human disrespect for other human beings is about the worst sin possible. As an engineer, would you say that engineers are more interested in alcohol than in sex? Well, I think really with most engineers it's more a case of one thing leads to another. I don't think you can uh, separate academic work from sex life. These are two very important aspects of a student's life. Obviously sex is an important aspect of, um, of any person's life and work is an important aspect of the student's life in particular. If you have a happy sex relationship with someone, you're obviously, your work is obviously going to benefit from this. Conversely, if you have a, a bad sex relationship, it's going to suffer. I think this is the, uh, the link between the two. I don't think it's the sex that causes the um, difference in, in study, you know. Uh, there's no problem where that's concerned. It's just the emotional entanglements that sort of come in with it. It's when you've got these that you get all frustrated and you can't do your work and things start to go wrong. Sex itself, I don't think it makes any difference to study if you've got it or if you haven't. From the 1960s and late 1960s, early 1970s, until the mid-1980s, there was a huge increase, particularly in rates of gonorrhea, um, which had probably reflected a big change in sexual behaviour in the 1960s and 70s. That epidemic of gonorrhea virtually disappeared in the mid-1980s, when, of course, the whole of the British population received a leaflet through their door about the risks of HIV and AIDS. That probably changed behaviour hugely. And, uh, in fact, I think when we did our first survey in 1990, was after a period when behaviour had changed, so probably that was quite a low level in terms of risk behaviour, low level, relatively low levels of risk. Since that time, we've seen the rates of STIs and gonorrhea increase again from the mid-1990s onwards, but nothing like the rates that they were in the 1970s.